Well, it's happening. Maybe it is. that like a drunken monkey. I do not know why it's grabbing like that. I'll do it manually. Okay, got multiple projects going at once here. But trying to keep my lead geos straight. What do we got? This is that winch. I think I took a picture of it, so I didn't show what it did. So, this gear right here normally gets pulled out when you pull the handle and rotate it so that this can freewheel. It disconnects the drive motor from the rest of the operation. So what I have left intact is the spring in there. Right. So the spring still pushes the gear out to engage it. You can see this handle used to be through there and that head of that recessed into there. Well, we don't need that anymore. You'll see why. Here's the plan. That gets in there, right? Normally a spring is holding the sprocket that way so it's engaged unless you were to pull that pin. And I cut this thick walled sleeve of steel. It just slips over that. And this is after I cut the drum in half. But I'm going to keep the drum pieces, including, sorry, I can't hold everything in one hand here. I'm going to keep all these pieces, including the bushing in here, I think. Well, just get in there one-handed operation hold on mm. all right now everything slid together like that so these two bolts will hold this distance just right because that springs in there the drive is always engaged right and I'm gonna put a bolt through the steel over here through the center of the aluminum drum so that's locked to that then we're going to weld a sprocket as big a diameter as we can get that'll still fit in here onto that sleeve. Uh, I'm also going to put a bolt through that end on the other side of the sprocket just so that what's spinning against itself is what was originally designed to spin against itself, which is the aluminum drum against the bushing that they gave. That holds everything solid. That's it. Bigger sprocket on this end, smaller one on the one inch diameter. Uh, handle for the trailer I'm hoping we can get a one and a half inch gear down there or uh, maybe one and a quarter I don't I don't know what uh, 
the outer diameter you can get is for a one inch shaft. They gotta go to the store and shop for sprockets. I'm hoping to find one that has a inch and three quarter inner diameter hole, but it's about a three inch sprocket for this. And I have a lathe, so if I have to, I can open up the hole in the center of that sprocket, but that's it. Then it's just mount this, get it the correct distance above the handle on the trailer or in proximity to it and lined up weld or set screw the um, small sprocket on the handle itself on the trailer and that should be it it should be about a two to one reduction so every one turn of this is two turns on the handle which i think torque wise would work out and that'll make the jack go reasonably fast because these are pretty slow geared motors but anyway that's the plan i gotta go sprocket shopping so the latest situation, you know, you can't reinvent the wheel too hard. Well, the sprockets that were available at Rural King without having to online order and figure stuff out were these. So that's what I decided to use. So what's the deal? Hold on, let me get you on the thing of a thing here. All right, Dan. So this is as much reduction as I could get. The shaft for the handle of the trailer is 1.2 inches-ish. So I'm gonna have to bore out this hub. And that's all right. We're gonna use a number 40 roller chain, which is more than big enough. And then anyway, this is the hub that almost exactly fit with the, uh, what does this, what does it say here? inch and a quarter is almost the diameter of the drum i might wrap a little tiny shim on there to take up the last bit of the slop probably can get away with it because uh, the chain doesn't have to be ridiculously tight or anything so anyway the last thing is with this drum on here i want to be able to use that bushing remember and the mount over here this thing so i need a spacer that fits between here and there so I'm just going to cut down the one I already made, which is the noise you hear in the background. That's the metal saw cutting that. So that's the new plan. It'll look like, wow. I won't be able to tell because I can't hold everything together. Rocket will be in the middle. This is the best gear ratio I could get, which is the biggest one up there and the smallest one that I could find uh, for the uh, trailer handle shaft. The only reason I had to go and quit with this is it's got to clear down here. The chain's got to fit through here, so I think that's about as big as I could have gone. And that way, this will turn. This is 20 teeth. This is. 16 teeth so it'll be a little better than one to one one time around for this will be one point whatever the math is on that turns on the jack handle and that's the best we could do because i didn't feel like trying to figure this out forever and um what are the parts online the ones that were at my local store for getting a sprocket at rural king were these so that's what we're going with i'll have to put this on the lathe He's got some caliper measurements uh, from the trailer handle. I think it's 1.2 inch. He's gonna re-measure it today to be sure, but I'll have to bore this out on the lathe. I think there's plenty of room and thickness on that big old piece of steel to do that. And we'll be set. Should just be able to slide these on, slide this on the handle, get this mounted, figure out the chain length and uh, hook it up. Well, I forgot to mention, I don't think I'm going to trust just the set screws on the aluminum down here. Uh, I might though, I'm not sure if I want to grind a little flat spot, I might. Or I might just drill these holes out, or one of them, all the way through and put a bolt through there. Not sure, we'll think about that. Oh, and the spacer also will need a hole drilled through it. 
so that, well, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll weld the spacer onto this face. I don't know, but I'm gonna tie everything together so it'll be a finished solid drum piece of the right length this way with a sprocket in the middle. That's the plan. There it audio. is. Is it audio? Uh-huh. You want to say something? Uh-uh. Right so I'm here? over here helping my buddy put this on his camper. As I said, just like the guys say on YouTube, bigger the blob, better the job. It'll hold. Anyway, plan is, that's the aluminum plate screwed on that U-channel. So I made the holes bigger than the bolts. This is gonna sit whoop, like this approximately, and we'll line up with this. So mount the plate down to that, then screw the winch onto that there, line up these, the little sprocket, figure we put one of the set screws into the hole there, and that'll be good enough. We might grind a little flat spot on the bar to make it, uh, you know, locked onto the bar for sure. And well, that's it, we're about ready for testing. Uh, other than that, you saw that these drum pieces were separated. I drilled and tapped the spacer piece when it was off and put in that as a set screw. So the drums held together again, just so the bushings will, you know, take the strain off of it. But part of this was because I didn't bring my MIG welder. <clears throat> I've re-spooled it for stuff like this where looks don't matter. Uh, I use flux core wire, and of course it splatters a lot. So number one, I'm not a good welder, number two, using flux core wire, but I believe it's plenty strong for the job it's doing. So that's it. Get it bolted down and see what happens. Oh, it fought us hard. Oh, yeah. Those things are supposed to be self-tapping. They're not, they'd break off, they're terrible. Anyhow, we use a tap and die and set them in there. So the plate's on, two bolts on the winch on. Everything's solid. This is not solid yet, but we're gonna grind two little flats on that that we're sure it's lined up, so. Then we realized you can't get the chain on and off without running the winch. So we're gonna have to run a section of chain across it right now. That's the plan. All right, <clears throat> so we had some failures. <laughs> what had happened was, oh God. So this is this way on the trailer, all right? With the chain hanging down. Well, even though we had it hooked on the sprocket twice, and measure these holes. Holes sometimes drift despite your best efforts. <sighs> or a chain was caught, something wasn't right. We thought we had it stretched tight. Marked the holes, pulled everything off, drilled the holes. Long story short, it was wrong. We had to cut a new piece of chain, two links longer. Did the same thing, got ready to mount it, and the chain's too loose to run again. So we've given up on that. <laughs> And what I decided that we're gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to slot these holes. That way there's some adjustment in it. And once you slide it on there, get both sprockets pulled together, you just can slide this part up on the plate until the chain's officially tight. Tighten down the bolts, and then maybe have one set screw or something that once everything's tight and established and working correctly, then drill one, you know, one hole in or something that's, that locks it in place at that tightened position. But there needs to be some adjustability in the system and there isn't any, but other than that, we made progress. So that's the next thing to do. And then take it back over to his house and we should have, uh, I guess, final installation and testing. Well, there it is, boys. It's hard to, and girls, dang it, I keep forgetting. There's some girls that watch this channel. Anyhow, as an example, the battery's almost dead, but I'll show you anyway. Yeah, I'm here to click off, but getting a charger on it, but it does work. Let me get another uh, video after we charge up the battery a minute. Okay, we put a charger on it for like a solid 10 seconds. Let's see if it does anything different. That's going up. I 
think that'll work. I just thought you probably want to see how fast up or down it goes. So let me uh, try to hold the camera dead still. Press and hold. All right, now it's on. All right, ready? Not breaking any speed records, but I'm glad that uh, we got the biggest gear ratio we could. So we've already gone through that a bunch of times previously, but I couldn't get any bigger gear that would fit in the housing and any smaller gear that would go on the shaft. So that's as fast as she'll go, but I think that'll work.